Hi everyone and welcome to Curly and Yiny. My name is Milena and in today's video I will show you how I wove this very nice baby blanket using my rigid head on loom. So let's get started! So for this project I am using two pickup sticks to make quite an intricate pickup stick pattern into the blanket and uh, for this reason I've decided to uh, divide my uh, video into two parts so uh, for the video today uh, you will see the warping of the loom you will see also uh, how I fix one of my warping mistake or warping decision <laughs> and I will also uh, start showing you at uh, the beginning of the pickup stick pattern uh, and then in uh, the second video I uh, will be uh, finishing the pickup uh, stick patterns I will finish explaining this pattern and uh, I will also finish the weaving of the blanket uh, so I've decided to do it this way because uh, if I wanted to uh, make the video not too long I was uh, about to cut a lot on my explanation and I didn't want to do this trade off uh, so uh, this week is the beginning and next week will be the end. So let's start this. So for the project I use some yarn from Lion Brand from their True Book collection and I use them in three different colors. So uh, the first one is a slate so it's dark gray. I've also used uh, this kind of purpley pink uh, which the name is mauve and mauve means French. It uh, means purple in French. And I've also uh, used uh, this light gray here which uh, name is silver. So uh, those yarn are actually a uh, rayon bamboo. Uh, I chose this yarn for this project because I uh, thought they were very nice looking. They are very shiny. I'm not sure how much it shows on the camera, but those are very, <laughs> they have a very silky uh, look to them, but also they are very, very soft. So I thought this would be very suitable for a little baby blanket. If you want to check out this yarn, I will link them in the description down below. And just uh, so that you know, uh, I use one ball of the mauve of the purple. I use one ball of the uh, light gray. Uh, so this is what was left at the end of the project. I've also uh, used two whole balls of this one and I had to go back to the store to buy a little bit more. Uh, so in total I had to uh, to use two whole balls of slate and a little bit of this third one in order to be able to finish the project. And so here if we take a look at the blanket you will see that I have done the pickup stick pattern in different um, in uh, different places on the blanket so it's not always in the same color block so I'm going to explain this as I go for the weaving but I thought it might be interesting for you to see it uh, beforehand to get a better idea of what we are going to do. So I wanted my blanket to be approximately 1 meter so this is why I worked my loom for 1.5 meters consider that this should be uh, enough to allow for uh, the waste yarn that I will have and also for a little bit of shrinkage that the yarn will have also. When I started doing this project, I have to admit, I realized pretty quickly that I was very rusted with my pickup stick patterns. So I don't remember when was the last time I actually used my pickup stick <laughs> in a project. So uh, I referred myself to uh, this very great book by Jane Patrick. So the name of the book is The Weaver's Idea Book. She has a whole chapter in this book about pickup stick. Uh, so how to use them and she gives a lot of uh, different ideas for pickup stick patterns. So uh, it was a great way for me to uh, get inspired and also to uh, refresh my knowledge on pickup stick patterns. So if ever you are curious about this book, I will also link it in the description down below. Alright, so first thing we need to prepare the loom for the project. So I need to prepare my heddle. I'm simply going to uh, separate my heddle into sections. So for the pattern, I will have five different sections. So uh, I will have a, one here that will be slate, then one silver, slate again, then mauve, and then I will have another slate uh, portion here. So they will all be the same size, so I need to uh, divide my heddle by five because there will be five sections. Um, so in terms of a centimeter, my heddle is 80 centimeter wide, so divided by five that means 16 centimeters for each each section and if I talk in terms of inches that would mean 6.5 inches a little less than that so it's not super precise and um, also uh, I am using my uh, 10 dpi heddle for this project I feel like with the size of the yarn so this is a, a size three light so I feel like it should be nice in this uh, heddle size 
So let's start labeling this heddle. So I decided to uh, measure each section with the measuring tape. Uh, so each section are 16 centimeters, but if I had to do it again, I would double check it uh, while uh, counting uh, all the dents in each section to make sure they are also all the same. So if ever you want to try this project, uh, the number that you're looking for, if you're also using a 10 DPI heddle, is to have 32 holes and 32 slots in each section uh, which means 64 threads per section of color. With the measuring tape I still managed to get this to this number but I think it would be more precise if uh, one were to count them. The only difference uh, was in the last section of the heddle and I'm going to explain to you a bit later why it was different and how I managed to fix this. The way the heddles are made, the two last uh, th holes of the heddle, so the two edges dents of the heddle are made of holes. So uh, this means that if we want to warp the whole width of the heddle, we would always get an uneven number. This is because, and this is the way I understand how the heddle works, uh, we always have a slot and a hole together. So they are always uh, two by two, so and when uh, we uh, warp the loom, uh, with the uh, direct method, we pull loops, so that creates two threads, and we put one thread in one hole and one thread in the slot. So one thread stays in the slot and the other thread goes in the hole, and it goes like that all the way through. But when you reach the very last hole, it just doesn't really have a slot with it because this is then the loom, this is not the heddle anymore. So what I usually do when I want to warp my hole, uh, the whole width of uh, my heddle, and this is what I did in this project today, I would simply pull one thread. So I would not technically pull the whole loop, I would simply uh, take my ball of yarn and uh, pull one single thread out of the last hole. So uh, this way I managed to have a fully uh, wiped heddle. And I know that my, uh, head, my, my number of threads are uneven, but in most of my project it doesn't really matter. However, for today's project, as I realized while I was weaving it, it actually mattered. Here's actually how all of this happened. So uh, at this point, I just finished uh, the first part of the warping. So I kept on going normally. So I didn't know I had a problem coming my way. So I uh, rolled the warp onto the back beam. Then I uh, threaded my heddle. And uh, finally, I attached the project to the loom and I started weaving. But at this point, I was still in a trial uh, era of the project. So I hadn't done any sample of this project beforehand, so I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do the pickup stick pattern. So I started playing around with different combinations to see what I really uh, wanted to do. And I quickly realized that something wasn't adding up, so I quickly realized that in one of one part of the pattern, I couldn't get the result I wanted because I seem, it seemed to be smaller than the other ones. Then I started counting and I realized that for this last section, so the section where I put one long lead thread in the last eye of the heddle, I realized that I had only 63 threads, which actually makes a lot of sense. So it didn't have its a friend, didn't have a slot thread. So this is why I was short of one thread in this section. At first, I thought I could go around it and play around with the pickup stick pattern that it wouldn't show but I couldn't find any combination in which I wouldn't see it so I uh, took the decision to uh, unweave uh, everything I had done. Uh, it sounds heartbreaking but I had to unweave it also because I did a mistake uh, at the very beginning of the project so I wanted to uh, go back and fix that 
also so i unwove everything and i'm going to show you how i fixed that extra thread to the loom i am going to try to add this one thread and have it hang loose on the side of the heddle. So I'm thinking that it's going to act a little bit like a slot thread because as you know, the threads in the slot, they, they are pretty free. So I'm thinking maybe on the edge, it might get a little bit of in the way, but it might still be manageable. So I'm gonna try this. So first I'm taking back the scrap yarn that I used when I wanted to measure the length of my warp and the distance at which I should place my loom in my step ladder. So this is the length of the whole project, basically. So I'm just going to cut one piece of yarn that will be the same length. I need my thread to be weighted down so that it would have tension because I've, I'm adding this thread on my loom and this thread is not uh, rolled around the back of my loom like the other thread so it does not have the same kind of tension going into it. If I just place it like that it's going to be all loose so I need to find a way to weight it down so that it would have tension. I think uh, pill uh, boxes like that are widely used among uh, weavers for this matter so uh, since my uh, thread is quite long and if and it's if I just let it drop, it would touch the floor and then I, uh, I won't have more uh, tension. It really needs to be hanging in there. I'm just going to uh, put quite a bit of length inside the pillbox. And then if I try this, now we can see at the back, <laughs> it is hanging, hanging, hanging. And it's not touching the ground. You don't see it well, but I swear it's not touching the ground. Let me try to show you. Anyway, <laughs> it is not touching, so I know now it's okay. So I'm simply going to uh, add it in my bundle here when I attached it to the loom. So here's my thread. So and now it's been pretty well attached to the loom with the rest of the threads. Here it seems to uh, glide well on the side of the head also. It can go up and down, up and down. And if we look down, let me focus on this. So we have the little uh, pill box that is hanging. So it is, the, the yarn is pretty uh, snagged in there so it doesn't move. It is hanging there which gives is giving me some tension. So cross fingers, it's gonna work. And now it's the moment of truth. Can we actually weave with this uh, setup? So let's start this. And now if I had to uh, do this project again and I want to save you uh, this uh, headache, <laughs> what I would have actually done instead of uh, when I decided to pull only one piece of yarn inside of the hole, I could have simply uh, pulled a loop. I would have probably pulled the loop out of the last slot. So the last slot would have um, four threads in it. And when it would be time to thread uh, the head all, I would uh, take two threads out of this last slot, put one in the eye and one out of the head all. And then I would uh, keep threading like I would normally do. So I really wanted to uh, share that information with you. So now let's move on to the fun part. Let's move on to the weaving. So uh, just a general idea of the pattern. So I'm going to uh, weave the pickup stick the pickup stick pattern in some parts of the blanket and I'm going to alternate. If then I change color in the weft, I'm going to change which blocks of color receive the pickup stick pattern. So for the first one, we're going to weave one block of slate, so the dark gray, and I'm going to uh, do the pickup stick pattern in the three section of the warp where uh, we can uh, see the slate, so where we have this color there. Also, uh, I just want to point out that I like to kind of frame my pickup stick pattern with some plain weave. So I wove a few picks of plain weave before starting the pickup stick pattern. I'm also uh, leaving a few threads on the border of the uh, square of color where I will not do, uh, I will not pick up any uh, colors there again to make this little uh, frame look. So without further ado, I'm going to explain this again as I go. So let's just jump on the loom and start this. 
So now here we have woven seven picks. So two picks will be a used to be into the hemming, into the hem stitch, and then I have five other picks that will work a little bit like a little border of plain weave because before I start doing my pickup pattern. So and now my uh, next pick is in the up position, and uh, I'm going to do uh, the first uh, pickup pattern sequence into the up position so I now just need to uh, go in the down position or uh, however to insert the pickup stick and then I'll be back here to weave so let's do this uh, in total I'm going to use two pickup sticks uh, to do uh, this um, to do the whole pattern and um, so it is not possible to uh, use pick, two pickup stick at the same time in the back of the loom so what I'm going to do I'm gonna have my uh, main pickup stick so uh, this pickup stick will uh, have one part of the pattern in it and I'm going to have my second pickup stick um, on, uh, on the main if you'd like so for the second pickup stick I'm going to uh, use it when I need it and this one I'm going to insert in the front when I do my uh, pick of the pattern I'm going to take it out so, but don't worry I'm going to uh, walk you through every I'm going to walk you through every step when this happens so for now I'm going to leave the second pickup stick aside because I don't need it for now I'm only going to use uh, the first one, so I'm going to uh, place this pickup stick. So I'm going to insert the pickup stick while my heddle is in the down position. Um, as you know, in the heddle, the threads that are in the holes, you don't have a lot of margin of um, movement. If I uh, show you, oh yeah, I'm in the up position, not fully. I'm gonna put this in the up position. They cannot move more than the shape of the um, of the hole so they are very limited as with the threads that are in the uh, slots and we see them better when you are in the down position they can move very friendly so they have a lot of margin of movement so this is why we're going to uh, slide the pickup stick in those slots because they will allow us more flexibility I'm going to uh, skip two threads then pick up one skip two pick up one so I'm going to pick up every third thread so let's do this so here I have one, two, and now three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm not sure how much you can uh, see it uh, well here, but on I'm picking up every so. In between all the threads that I've picked up, there's always two threads that are not picked up. So I'm going to do the same with the middle part of the pattern. So here I'm going to count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now we only have one left, one block left. So Let's do this. I'm gonna approach my pickup stick to the place where I want to start and here I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to uh, zoom out a little bit so that you can see uh, from a larger angle how I'm doing this. It is much harder, much harder to film the whole width of the loom when I have the whole 32 inches worth, <laughs> but I'll try to do my best. Okay, so now we are as promised in the up position. So all of our pickup stick pattern will happen into uh, the up position. So I have threads that uh, my threads are not my threads in the slot at this point are normally into the uh, down part of the shed. So they are right there. But I want to create intentionally flow. So for that they need to get hired, and so they need to get to the same level as the um, threads that are in the holes here. And so with the pickup stick, since I've picked them up, when I uh, slide the pickup stick closer to my head all, we can actually see uh, those threads rising and they are now getting to the same level as uh, my um, other threads, so as my threads that are in the hole. So and uh, now I can weave this uh, while creating flows. So just to really uh, illustrate what I'm saying, I'm going to uh, show you uh, how the shed is behaving when I am, uh, when I am advancing my pickup stick.
So I think I have better shot now of the whole, the whole loom. So I have slid my pickup stick behind my head all. My head all is now in the up position. So I am ready to uh, do my pick. Now I can beat. And I could put my head all into the down position. So I slid the pickup stick to the back, I'm in the down position and for now it's business as usual. We can already see uh, where the, th the floats are getting formed so we see threads that have not been picked by the interlacing of the threads. So I'm going now to weave five normal picks, so let's do them. So now we're ready to do a second round of pickup sticks, but this time I'm going to use my other pickup stick pattern. So this time I am going to use my second pickup stick. So for this one, um, this is the one that is not uh, the regular pickup stick, if it, pickup stick if you'd like. So I'm going to move it in and out. So I've put my head all into the up position because this pick will be woven in the up position. However, to install the pickup stick, it will be easier in the down position. So I will put my head all back into the down position. So and now I am going to uh, advance my uh, first pickup stick. As I am advancing this pickup stick, it uh, lifts the, those uh, threads a little bit more than the other one. And this has an effect of highlighting them. What I want to do now with this second pickup pick up stick <laughs> is to uh, grab the threads that are in between two uh, of the lifted pickup stick. So remember when I uh, did my pickup stick at the beginning, I was always skipping uh, two threads. So I was on, I was lifting one, skipping two, lifting one, skipping two. Well, now I want to grab those two threads with my stick. So I'm going to do it a few times with you in this video. So the first one I'm going to do would be with this uh, larger uh, vision, but don't worry, later on I'm going to show you uh, again, but from closer. So first of all, here uh, we have the uh, threads that are a bit more lifted, so I am inserting it here. So I'm skipping those two first because those uh, will stay in plain weave. Here we see the two threads that are lifted by this pickup stick, so I want to go inside those two threads and grab on to the two threads that weren't being picked up by the other pickup stick. So here again we have one and two that are lifted and inside, in between those two we have two ones that are not as lifted so I'm taking them. I don't know how much it shows on the camera but when you see it live it's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. And now I have reached the last lifted pickup stick. There are two threads here that have not been lifted by uh, the picks, but I don't want to touch this, so I'm simply going to slide my pickup stick further for the third uh, and final block. So skipping the two first, this one is lifted, so I go for the two next. This one is lifted, I go for the two next that aren't lifted. This one is the one lifted, so I can go here. And here we have the three last threads, so this one is lifted, those two will be my edges threads, so I don't want them to uh, be picked up by a pickup stick, otherwise I would make wonky edges, so I leave it like that. And so, and now we have a pretty good setup for now. <laughs> we have, so now we have our two pickup stick in place. So this one actually isn't going to be used for the weaving of the pick, so I'm going to uh, slit it back at the back of the loom, so this way it does not lift threads that I wouldn't want to be lifted. This one is staying here, so I'm going to uh, put my head all into the up position, like that, and now I can push it closer to the head all just to, make, to give me more space to move with my shuttle. So now I can uh, do my pick. So the shed created is actually pretty nice. Those threads are being lifted even higher than uh, my normal threads, so I'm having no difficulties at all passing my shuttle through. So I'm just going to arrange the pick. And 
now I will be ready to beat but since the pickup stick is in the way I need to uh, take it off and then I'm going to beat and I'm only going to take it back again when I'm ready to do this sequence again so let's take it off and now beat and now I would be ready to weave in the down position So uh, this is it for today's video. I know I'm uh, leaving you on a cliffhanger. <laughs> so I'll uh, be there next week uh, when I will uh, keep uh, doing the uh, pick up stick pattern. So and I will be uh, finishing the weaving of uh, this blanket. If you have any question about this project, uh, make sure to uh, leave me a comment in the description down below. And if I see uh, your comment or your question soon enough, I should be able to uh, respond to it in next week's video. So I think this is a great opportunity for that. Uh, so this being said, I I hope you're all keeping well and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.